Hi everyone, welcome to new tutorial of software Mark Mintac. In this video, we are going to talk about local mesh adaptivity feature. As usual, we will start with what is local mesh adaptivity. It is nothing but dividing any finite element into smaller elements. One example is shown here. You can see this area. In this area, bigger elements were subdivided into smaller elements. When we do this subdivision, it increases number of elements and nodes locally to improve the accuracy of solution in that area. And in Mark, we can do this anytime during the analysis based on multiple criteria. But another important question is why we need to do this. There are multiple reasons to use this. One is to obtain accurate results in some critical areas. For example, let's say if there is a stress concentration, we can use this local mesh adaptivity, which will create finer elements in that area. And we can capture that stress concentration more accurately. Another reason is to save computational cost. For example, if we are using this mesh adaptivity, we don't have to mesh the entire part with very small elements. We can use coarse elements at the beginning. And as analysis progresses, Mark will find out where smaller elements are needed and Mark will create those smaller elements only in those particular areas. And finally, to capture correct contact as shown over here, when this body is penetrating this particular element, you can see the contact is not satisfied correctly because element size is too large. But if we use local adaptivity, Mark will divide this element into smaller element and while dividing, it will make sure the contact is captured accurately. This local adaptivity, we can roughly say it is one type of remeshing. Mark has two types of remeshing. One is global remeshing, where whole body gets remeshed. We discussed this in another video. If you are interested in global remeshing, you can check out this video. And second type is local adaptivity, where elements are getting subdivided, which is focus of our this video. This slide gives little bit more introduction about local adaptivity. In Mark Mintat, we can apply this local adaptivity rule to specific element set. So it doesn't need to be applied for whole body. We can just choose particular elements. As of now, it can be used only with lower order elements. And this option is available with parallel processing as well. In order to define this local adaptivity, these inputs are needed from user. First, we have to select element region where it will be applicable. Then we have to specify adaptivity criteria. That is, when do you want to subdivide particular element? Then we have to choose adaptivity parameters such as how many refinement level particular element should go through. And then user can also add some advanced controls, which are optional. But using that, we can control this local adaptivity in a great detail. Now let's understand exactly how it works. Consider these four elements over here and we assign local adaptivity rule to these four elements. Then let's say adaptivity criteria is met for this particular element. So this element will be subdivided. In first step, what happens is element will get subdivided like this. Mark will create four smaller elements. When we create these four smaller elements, some new nodes will get generated such as this node E. Now these new nodes, we have to tie them appropriately. Otherwise, there can be a gap or overlap between this node and this element, which we don't want. So that's why these new nodes will get tied accordingly to ensure the compatibility. Then data mapping will be performed from this old element to these new elements. If there is some contact, those contact parameters will be redefined, boundary conditions and loads will be redefined, and this new mesh will be ready for further analysis. Now let's see one example. I always feel with examples, we can understand things better. In this example, we have two contact bodies. One is this 3D plate and another is this spherical ball. All the dimensions are given over here. The plate is fixed on this left face and we are going to push this ball in negative Z direction by two millimeters. Plate, we will use hex element and ball, we will use tet elements. This all geometry and everything we will create in Mintat. So you don't need any files to solve this example. Then we will introduce local adaptivity. So in first case, we will tell Mark to divide the elements when equivalent strain in particular element reaches some threshold value. And we will keep threshold value as 50% of maximum strain. And this local adaptivity, we will only apply to elements within plate. And here we will keep refinement level as two. This over here is level one refinement. That means element is getting subdivided into four smaller elements. Refinement level two is nothing but again within these four elements, subdivision can occur like this. If refinement level is three, then again, this will get subdivided, something like this. And in next case, we will subdivide element based on node in contact. That means for any particular element, when any of its node come in contact with some other body, it will get subdivided. 
and here we will keep refinement level as 3. And for the third case, we will use criteria based on stress value where we will choose threshold at 0.25. That means whenever stress within element is more than 25% of maximum stress, the element will get subdivided. We will use four threads to solve this example. And as per materials, we will use elastic plastic material for plate with Young's modulus 10 gigapascal, poisons ratio 0.5 and yield stress 500. And we will use only elastic material for ball with Young's modulus 30 gigapascal and poisons ratio 0.3. There are some more complicated examples in Mark's user guide. You can check them if you want to see some more complicated cases. But for this video, let's stick with this very simple example. So let's start with Mark Mentat. Before we start modeling, always make sure unit is correct over here. I want millimeters. Then for this example, analysis type, I want it 3D. So it is already selected 3D. And then make sure to choose your current directory. This is where all the files will be saved. Before I start modeling, usually I save this file. I will name it as plate and ball. Click save. And now we are ready to start. First, let's create geometry of plate. For this, I'm going to add a solid block. Here you have to enter the coordinates. Origin is 0, 0, 0. And then the dimensions of plate. In our case, it is 100, 50, and 20. And that's it, plate is ready. You can rotate it and see it is a 3D block. Next, I will add geometry for ball. For that, I will change this to sphere. Again, add. Now the coordinate for center of sphere will be 50, 25, and 30 with radius 10. That's it, geometry is ready. Now let's quickly do meshing. For meshing, let's go into this auto mesh volumes. For ball, I want tet elements, so I will not change anything over here. Just click on this tet mesh and click on ball. Your mesh should be ready. Now this I feel is little bit coarse. So let's change this scale factor to 0.5. It will create elements with half size of whatever you are seeing here. Again, click on tet mesh, ball and done. For plate, let's change it to hex. Here target element size, I will choose as 5. Click on voxel mesh, click here and done. It's that easy to create mesh in Menta. Let's close this and move on to material properties. First, I will create material for ball, which is elastic. Young's modulus is 30 gigapascal, poisons ratio 0.3. So here I will enter 30. We have to convert it to megapascal. So three more zeros and poisons ratio 0.3. We have to assign this material to ball. For that, click add and then click on this ball. But before we have to turn this dynamic control off and then click on this ball, right click, that's it. Body is added, so material is assigned. Next, let's create elastic plastic material. Here, Young's modulus is 10, Poisson's ratio 0.25, so 10,000 in megapascal and 0.25. To add yield stress, we have to activate this plasticity. And then here we can add yield stress as 500 megapascal. Again, assign this to this plate. Sometime this get turns on again. So again, turn it off and assign to plate. That's it, done. Next, we will create two contact bodies. So mesh deformable contact body. First, let's say ball, add solid body here and ball and next plate. Add plate. Now, one unique feature about Mark is you don't have to define contact because by default, it will assume touching contact between all the contact bodies. So right now we are not defining any contact properties or anything, but still the contact between these two bodies will work. Then let's go to boundary conditions. Here I'm creating new boundary condition, fixed displacement. I will name it as fix. And let's fix all the degrees of freedom for all the nodes on this left face. So let me add all the nodes over here and click OK. Now this left face is fixed. Next thing is we should push this ball against the plate. For that another boundary condition, fixed displacement. Here I don't want ball to move in X or Y direction, but in Z direction, it should go two millimeters in negative Z direction, so minus two. Instead of applying this boundary condition suddenly, I will ramp it up to current value and then add solid ball over here. Say okay. Next, let's go to mesh adaptivity. Here we will introduce new local adaptivity criteria. And for first case, 
it will be based on strain value so here go to new equivalent value and here choose strain relative then threshold we will enter 0.5 when you choose relative strain that means the threshold value is 50 percent of maximum strain so whenever strain in particular element reaches to more than 50 percent of maximum strain within that contact body that element will get subdivided but if you choose strain absolute that means when the element strain value reaches to 0.5 the absolute value of 0.5 not comparing to any other elements then it will get subdivided so in our case of course 0.5 absolute strain will not be reached because it will not have that huge deformations so we are choosing relative strain and level i will change it to 2 now we have to add elements over here and i want all the elements from this plate so for that i will hide this ball then click add over here and choose all visible elements and say ok again we can unhide the ball so local adaptivity is introduced next let's create a load case we don't have to change anything over here this is a kind of a simple model so it should not have any convergence issues so let's click ok and finally job let's create new job choose this load case here from initial load i am going to remove this second boundary condition where ball is pushing the plate say ok and let's add some job results shall we so we can add maybe one my stress then let's say strain as well over here and that's it as of now before we run the analysis you can always click on this check button if there are some errors or warnings in your model then that will tell you our model looks good as nothing popped up now as you might have noticed we did not even assign the element types and if you want to check you can identify the element types over here and you can see Mentat automatically assigned the appropriate element types to both contact bodies. If I may click here in solids, you can see number 134 is full integration TET elements which are assigned to ball and number 7 is full integration hex elements which are assigned to plate. So in most cases, Mentat will automatically assign appropriate elements but if you want to change of course, you can change it from here. Now everything is done. Let's submit the job. To run the job, we want to use four threads. As of now, it is just one thread. So that we can change over here. Use multiple threads and four. If you want for assembly and recovery as well, you can use multiple threads. This is a pretty simple model, so it will not matter much. But I just wanted to show how to use parallel processing. Again, we can save model once. So everything what we did till now, it's saved. And then submit the job. Let's open the results let's see the stress values now if i go to next increments you can see here subdivision is occurring so let me hide this contact body of ball so we can see it in a better way you can see initially the mesh is coarse that's why you can see stress concentration within this huge area but when subdivision occurs the stress concentration area is reduced giving us more accurate results now subdivision is occurring here because strain is concentrated over here if we change this to strain let's say equivalent of total strain so you can see strain is concentrated over here that's why subdivision is occurring over here and if we continue going to next increments you will see even more subdivision now instead of this criterion based on strain we can also change it to based on contact so let's do that let me close this we can go to this adaptivity criteria and here we can change this type to node in contact and i will change this value also to 3 say ok and just submit the job again open the results i will hide this ball and let's go to directly last increment and you can see much more finer elements because we used refinement level as 3 and this is based on contact so if we choose this contact status so you can see within this area contact is happening so similarly there are many other options available there is of course equivalent value option in which again there are some sub options you can choose stress strain etc maybe i can show one more so let's see relative stress and here we can reduce it to 0.25 say ok and submit the job again I am hoping there will be some stress concentration over here at the fixed end. So we will see some subdivisions on these elements as well. 
apart from the elements in this contact region. Let's see. I will hide the wall first. And if you go to last increment, you can see subdivisions over here as well because the stress is concentrated over there as well. So you can see there is a stress concentration here. Hence, there are subdivisions over here as well. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions, you can ask them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.